Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden, right here. We're going to cover two more cray cray mutable state issues today. The first is happy weekend, by the way. The first is dealing with reading files. And the second is with the server, both of which cover the whole issue of input output, where it may take some time to read stuff from the server. Maybe you have a little slow internet connection, the server's down, or you're making a bunch of hops. And from a file, it may or may not work. It's out of your control. It's not in your program. It's from some other thing from the hard drive. Maybe it's not even there. So those two issues of I.O. make dealing with mutable state really hard. We're going to show you those two problems. And then this weekend, we'll start working away to showing you how to fix them. So this is the last one where you go, okay, that's awful. I'm tired of it. I want to know how to fix mutable state. Just two more to go, and then we're done. So I've created a folder here called state local file. We're going to create an index dot js file within that folder and do our famous log equals console log so we don't have to type a lot we're going to use an amazing library built in the node called fs notice that we have no dot in front of us so this is built in or global fs stands for file system and it allows us to read and write the file system so we're going to read from a text file called cal and then print it out to the screen as a message so first we need to read cal i'm going to create an arrow function here because we don't care about this. We don't want to instantiate it new. We just want to read a file. So we'll say cal says. Oh, we need a variable. Let's do that right now. Cal says. So this is going to store the message that we read. Cal says equals the fs read file sync. Now you'll notice in Node, it always has nowadays the asynchronous version or the synchronous version. We're going to do the synchronous version to make it easy for us to code. So we don't have to deal with callbacks. Make it easy. Type in cal.txt. And then once we've read it, we're going to print it out to the screen. So we're going to say const speak cal. And then log the cal says. Cal says variable and then add a period to pretend we speak reasonable English. Then we're going to call them read cal first, speak cal second. Very procedural, no oop involved, just plain old procedural coding. And lastly, we're going to create that cal.hex file. So I'm going to create a cal.txt and put some JSON in there. Cal says, sup. We're going to go to our integrated terminal and we're going to run node index.js. And it says the cal says string JSON. You'll know it's a string JSON, even though it kind of looks like an object because of these double quotes here. So let's parse it out as JSON. We'll say JSON parse because fs read file sync is going to give us a string. There we go. Now we got an object. We're close. But the property we want inside of cal is this little guy right there. So we'll say cal says it's amazing. We can iterate. So the cal says so. Very cool. What happens if we delete the text file? <laughs> gone goodbye and it goes boom or maybe we i don't know broke the file made it blank somehow these are things outside of your program's control so we're going to be good little coders and add a try catch around this guy if you're not little no offense meant i am just projecting my lack of gains because of my knee injury. So let's do log failed to parse. And we'll log the error later. All we know is we couldn't read the file. So we'll rerun, it works. We'll then go to cow and then blank it out, which is impossible to parse if it's JSON because it's not valid. And it says fail to parse. Now here's the issue, the cow says undefined. So our problem with dealing with state here affected this poor guy. All he wanted to do was show a cute little message from the cow, but no. Mutable state reading IO fails. So that's one issue with IO is that you can't control that. Now, do we know if read cal even works to say, hey, if it doesn't work, just don't call speak cal? Okay, sure. Let's <laughs> return true. Assuming this is a valid parse here. Otherwise, return false. So now the user of read cal has to know that, hey, look, if you want to call me, I could blow up. <laughs> so let me put an if-in statement. Make sure I'm true first. If I'm true, then, then you can use my data. Otherwise, 
the data that I set magically up here is not going to work. So this is very classic procedural. So it failed to parse. We don't speak to cow. Very common problem. Very frustrating. Now you have this if then statement and no one knows why is it, if it's why is it true like what does that mean well it means that it set this data okay so you got to go find it procedural coding is nice in that it's it's very explicit the steps but those steps are not really interrelated this just does one job and if it fails at it you don't know this works so that's a very frustrating thing so let's show you the server side version of this now we're going to deal with asynchronous coding where that file that we read was instantaneous and our code blocked and actually waited for it to load when you're dealing with a server, it's not in your control. Down here, we have the client, and this is going to consume whatever that server says. So the server code, we're going to create a simple little RESTify server. So I'm going to save index.js in this server here. And before we go any further, let's install RESTify. Now, if you don't remember my NPM crash course, I will do a more updated NPM tutorial. But for now, it is a way for you to install libraries without you having to do anything. And we're going to create this package JSON that says, hey, can you install these libraries? So we don't have to check tons and tons of code. We just have to deal with package JSON and index.js. So I'm going to generate a quick package JSON. I'm going to install Restify. It's an easy way to write little servers that serve JSON back, microservices, that kind of thing. So while that's running, we will go up here and start writing our server. So let's find write restify require the restify library which abstracts all the lower level node server stuff and we will create a server you can create multiple in this case we're creating one we're going to have one method <laughs> so it's slash moo and like our text file it's going to send back what the cow says but instead of in a text file it's actually going to send it across the internet just like a normal server would when you call Google or APIs, things like that. And Restify always gives you the request of what the client sent, if they posted stuff or had Git variables. And then the response is for you to send messages back to them. So we're going to say send 200, which is a numerical representation of it worked, bro. Web browsers know that 200 means it worked. 500 and other things mean it broke. In our case, it worked, the cow is happy, and it says sup, just like it did in the text file, except now we're sending it back to the client. Lastly, the server needs to listen. So we're just gonna say port 8080. Uh, it's a nice number, I guess, the default for most things. Console log, server ready. That seems subtle enough, what do you think? So let's test it out. We'll say node, index.js. Cool, server is ready. So now we can test it out in our browser. We'll go to localhost 8080. And there's nothing default there. So let's go slash moo. And this is what's called a route. And Restify knows to deal with those routes. In this case, there's all true data sub. So the cow says data sub. So far, so good. Let's close that. Now we'll go to our client and actually consume this. So same story. We'll save an index.js just to play around. This is our state client project. So this is dealing with the client. This is dealing with the server. Client is what runs on your machine or in the browser. And this deals with what runs basically in the cloud, so to speak. So in our client, we'll do the same thing that we did before, but instead of installing Restify, we're gonna install a request. It's a really simple library to make requests in Node. If you've ever used fetch or jQuery in the browser, very similar to that. So we'll input, yes, generated for me, bro. npm install request, save. So it's gonna install that request library for me so that I don't have to go to the internet and actually download it. Get that request library that we just installed. It's called request. We're gonna store our cal says just like before. But in this case, we're gonna get the data from the server and it may take a while. JavaScript's gonna be done running and we're never gonna hear the response. So we're gonna give it a callback and say, hey, when you're done, when you've got the data, just call this function and hand it the data as the first parameter, thanks. So JavaScript will stop, it'll hang out, wait for the internet to actually give it its data and then it'll run this function for you. So you just have to give it one. We're gonna call request with our URL, which is HTTP slash slash localhost, that means my machine, my machine, right, y'all, 8080 slash move. 
and it gets three parameters in the callback for a request. The first is if it, there was an error, which tries to follow the standard known callback convention. The second is the response. There is a lot of data in HTTP responses if you care about them. I do not. You and I just care about the body. What did the server actually send us? What's the goody data? That's all we care about. Now, just like before, we could be parsing some nasty stuff from the internet. You never want to trust things from strangers, right? So we're going to wrap it with a try catch to be proactive here. And just like before, we're going to parse the body, which comes back as a string and get the data off of it. Before it was cal says, because that was the JSON we did. But here we just did data right here. Data sup. So we're going to parse that string out as JSON. This is what the server told us. Otherwise, the server sent us some crazy whack stuff, and we don't want it. Server sent weirdness, man. And that's it. Either way, we're going to let you know it's done. When it's done, we'll have our data. So we'll call it get data. Console log. The cow says, and just as before, it's the whole cow says variable. Cow says, and a period. So now we're going to run the code with no red around. And it says the cow says sup. Wonderful. Now what happens when your internet goes down? What happens? We'll rerun it again. The server weirdness, man. The cow says undefined. <laughs> so, okay, wait a minute. This failed. So now we'll say uh, callback, no error, standard node way of doing things, and then true, otherwise callback error, we'll actually pass the error and just nothing else. So then we can say error, and then we'll make this function bigger. Now the consumer to use get data has to interpret the result. So we'll say if error equals 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 undefined means nothing, then we hopefully got some good parsing working. And we can use, safely use our cal says data. So now we're forcing this function to interpret the response it got back, have an if then statement if it got an error or not. And if it didn't, assume it's successful and this works, and this variable is already packaged and ready for it to use. So let's rerun it again with no server still running. The server sent weirdness man, so we're not gonna print it out. So classic procedural, even in the node world with servers, you can see that these callbacks, you're still responsible for handling error handling. We don't even know if get data worked. We have to pass a callback in and wait. So get data has no return value. It does a lot of things and there's no quick way from a unit test perspective to test it because this request is actually going to make a call to the server. So you have to use something like Sanon or whatever else to get into it. So a lot of things wrong with this, both this and the, the textbook. You can see that IO is a very challenging thing to deal with, with when you have state in charge. Because now, instead of touching the state, we're going to make sure that our world is good before we go and snag it. If our world isn't good, we don't touch it. And everyone and their mom starts doing that. Now, when you have one state variable, okay, pretty cool. What if you have a bunch of these? Suddenly this and the if-then statements get insane. Very hard to manage with large teams. Not fun, very challenging, and oop encapsulation doesn't always fix it. So as you can see, IO isn't very fun. It's completely unpredictable, and it's very hard to satisfy the pure function constraints of you should always give me a value back with the same input. So if I say read the cow text file, you should always give me the cow file contents or the cow file, it might have worked status, right? And then I inspect that status. So that kind of IO stuff is very hard because it's not in control. And then the internet's even worse. As soon as you make calls to the server, it may or may not be down. You have to interpret the results. If you're making multiple calls to the server, such as a database or doing searches and filtering that data, from multiple locations. You then have to detect each one of those worked. Keep track of that whole thing in your head. And if one of those things break down, don't update the data and make sure you give enough information so those consuming it know not to mess with it. You'll notice a lot of networking libraries that are either procedural OOP will give very, very large amounts of errors and error codes so that those coders, especially if they have classes, 
can detect those types of errors and respond accordingly, which is awful. It's very painful, very hard coding, state ridden, and hard to keep all that stuff intact in the right order so it fits. We're done. No more state. No more no more mutable state we're going to talk about. For now, you have a good understanding of how state is very hard to deal with and some of the minor strategies from a procedural perspective and a little bit of oop of how to get around it. You got other questions, hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see y'all tomorrow.